Hi everyone, welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. Today on the table we're going to take a look at another board game insert. This time it's for Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion, which I have played through to and three player all the way to the end. There is a playlist link down in the video description if you're curious about checking out those playthrough videos. But today we're going to look at how everything is stored currently in the box here. And then we're going to put this insert together from eRaptor and put everything together and stick around to the end of the video. I'll give you my initial thoughts and also let you know how you can get more information on this insert. So we're gonna take a super quick look inside Gloomhaven Jaws Line, how it is currently stored, and this is how we stored it uh, during our playthrough series, uh, just using what came with it. Not the greatest storage solution, but it worked. Um, but we'll see how the eRaptor insert can improve on this. So I'm not going to show off any spoilers, so I won't go too deep into the box. I, I'm afraid there might be stuff that's come out of some of the hidden boxes. Um, but just all the books and pages and, you know, campaign tracker and all that stuff on top. Uh, then we got our dials are just in here. And then we even like painted miniatures just rolling around in here. Bags. Everything's in baggies. Here's a little tray that comes inside. And then just like baggies, 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 all the monsters, our cards, player stuff, baggies. Uh, there's stuff shoved under here, more monsters and baggies. Uh, the character stuff is in the boxes, but it, yeah, it's just like, it's a mess. It, it's, and this is just how we sort it. We didn't want to organize it really. And then when we're done, we just kind of threw it in thinking next time we play, uh, we'll sort it all out again. So um, yeah, but that's kind of how it was during our playthrough series. This is not much different there. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm looking forward to trying out the E-Raptor insert uh, and putting it together and seeing how everything looks in the box. So let's take a look. All right, so what we're going to do now is put together this Gloomhaven Jaws Line insert by E-Raptor. Uh, and you'll watch me put it together sped up, but I will include the time that it took me roughly to build it. Uh, after I'm done putting it together, you'll see that on the video screen. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's put this thing together. Okay, so there it is all put together. Uh, you'll see the time uh, it took on the screen in front of you there. Uh, just want to note a couple things putting this one together. There's always little quirks and stuff. Uh, the instructions, just follow it by number. Take your time, be patient. Uh, one thing I noticed, the way it um, describes everything by a number. So you just pick a piece, you start looking for like, put in eight first, then nine, then 10. The only thing is some of the numbered pieces are on different sheets. And the one issue I would say, none of them are labeled. None of these pieces of wood have any numbers on them. So you, if you start popping them all out uh, right off the hop, you will lose track of pieces and you might confuse yourself, uh, make it longer and, and, and than it needs to be. So what I did was just organize things as you saw there uh, in order. So I would just pop out like, you know, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, you know, pieces, all put them in a row. And then as I was going through the instructions, I had them right there. Um, but sometimes I needed the next pieces. I had to switch between sheets because they're on different sheets of wood. Uh, the numbers are all mixed in. They're not with that base all on one side. So you have to keep flipping the rules, uh, or not the rules, the instructions uh, on both sides, looking for the pieces you're looking for. What you could do right from the start uh, is, I don't know if you have like a, like a big sheet of paper or something, lay all the pieces out and put numbers on the paper. It's just too bad the pieces didn't have numbers on them. So you could, you could easily find the piece you need. So that's well, like one improvement I wish they had was the same way they put like unique monsters on this piece. 
just put a tiny little number on, on each piece. So that way, if you like lost the piece or you could just start by popping everything out, it, you'd know all the pieces, like even the bottoms, the A, B and C and whatever base that you're starting with the bottom piece of wood, it has no letter on it. Like they could just make it so much easier by just putting letters and numbers uh, into the pieces the same way this is here. I don't know if that would take longer, but I think it would make the assembly process much easier. All right. One thing to note, they do have uh, the labels again, like some of the dividers we've seen in the other E-Raptor inserts. I like that a lot. You just have to be careful. I had to look at the website there just to make sure that I put the piece on facing the right way uh, so that I could see it. But it all kind of made sense as I was putting it together, but just be careful with that. Uh, anyways, now we're going to take uh, all the stuff from the Jaws of the Lion box and we're going to put it all inside the insert and then put it in the box and we'll take a look at it. All right, so I put the insert together. I uh, just want to talk about a couple things I noticed. Uh, the nameplates, uh, little, little initiative name tags for the monsters are supposed to be kept in this little trough here. I decided to keep them with the standees. That was one of the nice things of the baggy system in the base set. Yes, it was a mess, uh, but at least it was quick for setup and tear down to quickly throw things in bags, see them through the bags. Your cards are together with your monsters, which brings me to the cards now. The monster ability cards are separate, separate from the standees and the nameplates uh in here but i mean there aren't that many it's probably not too bad to sh shuffle through here and grab what you need especially if you organize them alphabetically uh you could also make your own dividers to go in there to keep them separated by deck type uh one thing to note too the items uh don't have uh the unavailable and available item separator won't really fit in there but you could easily uh cut it to make it fit in there the one that came with the set to keep your items separated same with curse and bless uh, it doesn't really fit over here uh, with the rest of your attack modifier cards, uh, but you could easily cut it to slide them in if you want to keep that stuff uh, organized and separated and use that, or you can make your own dividers, of course. Battle goals, you see them up here. Uh, but the one for the event cards, the city events, uh, does fit in nicely. That works, so that's great. Uh, I do have some cards that I didn't want to jam back in. Oh, we have a lot of sleeved cards. Uh, that don't really fit too nicely back in these boxes uh, while well, in the middle of a playthrough. So I just kept some in the baggies. I didn't want to jam back in there. Hopefully they fit in the box, uh, kind of loose in the baggies. And another thing is I threw away the miniature boxes um, for the minis. So I have to find a way to put these uh, stored away some way better uh, than just throwing them in loose. So maybe I'll, I'll find a way to put those in uh a little more safely i tossed the boxes unfortunately as did we toss one of the side boxes that have little spoilers in them um that's why one's missing from here but these are supposed to go in the box with the other boxes for the miniatures kind of slide along the side uh so that's how it's supposed to normally go so i'll have to, I'll have to make do with what i have now um but i will have to figure out a solution for those miniatures it's too bad uh with this insert it wasn't like the tainted grail insert where the miniatures uh, kind of went in wells, uh, wooden wells that had belt uh, stuck inside to kind of protect them and, and make them easier to grab. I, I wouldn't like to have to keep storing these in the boxes and take them out of the boxes over and over again anyway. So that's why I toss the boxes. Um, but yeah, I need a better way to store these, especially since they're painted. So anyways, let's try to put this all back in the Gloomhaven Jaws Lion box and, and see how it looks. Okay, so we got everything in the box. Uh, books on top, your map and all that uh, fit on top nicely. Then you have that one tray on the top here. Then you have your second tray. And as you can see here, uh, you got your character boxes. But on the side here is where your miniatures boxes are supposed to fit. I just threw the minis in there uh, loose, but there's not much space in there, so they shouldn't really bounce around anyway. And they got this little baggie of standee tokens beside them and all your cards along the back. I just jammed those other baggies of cards I had uh, in those spaces for now. Uh, but yeah, not too shabby. Keeps everything nice and tight, uh, locked in here, so not everything flying around. I like that. Okay, and then... Oh, so yeah, everything fits. Throw that on the other side. Okay, everything fits just like it did before. Uh, box is pretty well closed, the same way it was. It was the same way... Uh, with the game, how I had it before, I noticed the box wasn't fully tightly closed. I don't know if it's supposed to be that way anyway, um, but that's the way it is. But that is not bad at all. Um, but yeah, I like it. Uh, seems good. Fits everything in. Nice and organized. Uh, I like the way there's no more baggies. Pile of baggies just jammed in there was not the way I like to store it. I like the way everything's more organized here. You just pull out your trays, grab the monsters you need, 
shuffle through your cards, grab the cards you need, find the ones you need, pull them out. Uh, you're good to go, good to play the game. Keep one of those trays out on the table for your money, your damage, if you're not using dice and that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, not a bad uh, solution here. I think it definitely cleans things up. It's better than the insert uh, that came with the game for sure. It was nice what Gloomhaven Jaws Lion came with by default with little dividers, trays for the cards and everything. The baggy system was functional, it was okay. But we all we all know there there had to be a better solution. So th this this is pretty good. Um, set up and tear down should be improved, I would think. Uh, but not a, not a bad job here. All right, so that was a look at the Gloomhaven Jaws Lion insert uh, from E Raptor. Thanks to the folks over at E Raptor for sending this over to me to review for you guys, put together, and take a look at. Uh, if you want more information on this insert, check out the link in the video description below. Uh, also, I just want to point out that I've had some comments on past videos in the live streams and whatnot, uh, trying to find these E-Raptor inserts. They are available at local retailers in US, Canada, and other countries around the world. Uh, just hit up the E-Raptor website, scroll down to the very bottom, hit the retailer link, uh, and then you can see via country, uh, all the retailers that work with E-Raptor. You might be able to save some money on shipping. Uh, and at the time of this recording, there is a sale. There always seems to be a sale uh, going on on the E-Raptor website. So uh, this insert actually is on sale right now. So check out the link uh, in the video description to see that. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching. Thanks to everyone supporting us on Patreon. Hit that like button if you like what you see here. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.